Hey, I'm Alec, and today I'm going to help find the right 3D modeling software for you. There's nothing more satisfying than taking the time to sketch out, design, measure, prototype, and 3D print something that's totally your own design. Whether it's something designed to go on something else, or it's totally unique and the first of its kind. In either case, you're going to need some considerations on what that modeling software actually is to be able to create that. Because there's a lot of different ways that this can go, both in cost, what they can do, and how they can best serve you. So first, you need to consider the purpose of this modeling software. Because some of them are designed for very artistic ideas, like this planter. Or something that's very structural and very precise, like this motor mount, albeit this is a little melted. Or even this small pulley. It's something that is very precise in how big parts need to be, how big this flat is. And so there's two different categories, really, of modeling softwares. There's the organic, intricate, more lifelike models. And then there's the more structural, precise, and measurable models that you can find. So while some of these are very expensive and very featured, they may not be super easy to get into. They may be something that you work your way up to and isn't really designed as a, here it is, get to work, but more of a, you already know your way around modeling software, so this should be pretty easy for you to get into. Whereas there are others where it is the first modeling software and designed to be very user-friendly, has tutorials, has a well-received community that is always uploading new content on how to use that software. So you may want to look into how supported do you intend to be? Do you intend to go into this totally blind and learn as you go? Or do you want to look for something that already has an established community and some resources to be able to learn how to use it? Now with 3D printing, the common file type are STLs. So you want to make sure that the software has the ability to export as an STL or have some way to funnel it from different file formats to get it to an STL. Because Google SketchUp doesn't natively export as STLs, you have to get a plugin, install it, which is easy, but it's not something that is natively done on the software. So you may need to get a third-party application where you can upload, say, an OBJ and then download it back as an STL you may just have to look into what can your software export. So this is kind of an advanced consideration, but it's do you want something that is a parametric modeling software or is it exact? So something like this motor mount, you can go back into the original model and say, I want this spacing between here to be 45 millimeters. And the rest of the model will cascade and follow and be able to be the same part without just warping the whole model. So with a parametric modeling software, you can go back and change I want the radius of this bigger or smaller, and all of the other features will follow suit. Whereas with an exact modeling software, you have to modify the entire model to get it back to a place that you want it. So you can't just go in and say, oh, this hole's too small. You have to remodel that feature to get it back to where you want. You just have to consider, are you modeling something that needs to be very precise, like a motor mount, or do you want something that's more artistic and doesn't have any exact specifications, like a mask? There are dozens of different 3D modeling softwares, like I said, all with different purposes, but I've gone to the liberty of creating a very small list of some that either I know about or I think would be good for you to know about. There are a couple different softwares that are pretty easy to get into. There's Tinkercad, which is very much an elementary school student design software. We're basically just mashing together spheres and circles and cubes and different shapes just to make something, whether it's for a lesson plan or just get kids interested in being able to 3D model and 3D printing and have that sort of mindset. Or there's something like Matter Control, which is a very much maker community oriented 3D modeling software. So you can make shapes a lot easier than if you were to try some of these more advanced softwares. So if you're just trying to look into how to fit 3D printing into your workflow, you don't need to take a college course or a four week lesson plan on how to actually get into it like some of these other softwares you can very easily just dive in and start modeling things right away. Now, if you're looking for something a little more artistic, there's a couple different programs like Mesh Mixer, Sculptress, and ZBrush. So ZBrush made Sculptress. It's just a free version of their roughly $900 software, and Mesh Mixer is free and made by Autodesk. So with Mesh Mixer, it's pretty simple. It's just about taking shapes and being able to transform them, scale them, do a very small amount of sculpting, but it's not super intuitive, whereas Sculptress is something where you could model this very easily or model, say, uh, like, like virtual clay sculpting. That's what these programs are. It's a lot easier to be able to make something very organic 
and something where you can't measure it and say, oh, well, this face needs to be 35 millimeters. It's very much just sculpt it and see how it works. Now there's also mesh modeling where instead of having a basic shape and sculpting on top of it, you take a plane and then you add more planes to the side and bend them and add more and bend them and you keep doing that until you come up with a 3D shape. That's how this mask was made. It started out as just one plane and then it was extended all the way around to make one bigger one and added different operations to smooth it out and make it something a lot more interesting and not just flat. So you can use something like Blender, which is free and open source, but it has a little bit of a learning curve, or you have 3ds Max with, or Maya, which are more professional and are professionally used for modeling. However, as such, they do also have that same price tag, where it's in the couple thousand dollar price range for either a one-time license or for a recurring licensing fee. So it is something where if you intend to use it a lot, maybe you should get the more expensive one, but if it's something you'll use just a little bit, Blender should fill most of your needs. If you're looking for something more precise, you have the parametric softwares like FreeCAD, Onshape, Fusion 360, or SolidWorks as examples. So FreeCAD is what Lulzbot uses to make their printers. It's something that is open source, so you can go in and be able to share how you made things, things like that. And it's parametric, so you can go and say, well, I made this part too small, let's just open up that hole for the screw and make it a little easier. And that's how the rest work. FreeCAD is very basic. Onshape is a bit more advanced. It's very similar to SolidWorks, which is that $5,000 a year license. But Onshape does make it so that when you publish something with a free license, it is public. You can't have anything private in your own folder. It is something that's just on their public format. Whereas Fusion 360 is something that's fairly advanced in that it has a lot of different capabilities and as such does have a bit of a learning curve to figure out how it works. However, it's completely free if you are a student, a hobbyist, or a small business with a revenue less than $100,000 per year. So it does apply to a lot of different people, which means it does have a much larger audience that actually uses it. So you can find a lot of different tutorials online for how to use it, how to just model things with it, modify things that exist. So with these parametric modeling softwares, you have a lot more control over how you actually make things. And that about covers it. I hope the information that I've presented here is enough to give you an idea of which 3D modeling software you need to be able to start modeling. Now, like I said, I couldn't mention all of them, but if you feel like there's one that I didn't mention that I really should have, feel free to leave it in the comments down below. Or if you feel like you have a favorite that you really want people to know about, or one that you would recommend to a friend, I'd love to hear that too. I'm Alec from Matter Hackers. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching. If you liked that, subscribe to our channel to keep up to date with all of our videos. And remember, go to matterhackers.com to shop for everything 3D printing.